Mr. Harland. Today, we are talking about the famous computer hacker, Kevin Mitnick. But first, I need to find a beautiful tree to stay in. Ah, oh, yes, a tree. A lovely tree. beautiful snow. Maybe we'll see some beautiful animals roaming around. But yes. <clears throat> we'll be talking about Kevin Mitnick today. Ooh, that sounds like a nice animal. I just can't see him. Oh well. Sounds like a nice animal. Kevin born Kevin David Mitnick. He is an American computer security consultant and author and a convicted hacker. He is best known for his high profile 1995 arrest and five years in prison for various computer and communications related crimes. Mitnick's pursuit, arrest, trial, sentence, along with associated journalism, books, films, were all controversial. Heck, who wouldn't be controversial in the 90s? He now runs the security firm Mitnick Security Consulting, LLC. He is also the chief hacking officer and part owner of the security awareness training company, No Before. Ah, I see. No B with the number four. Now that is just cool. Someone with uniqueness when it comes to making a company. As well as an active advisory board member at Zimperium, a firm that develops a mobile intrusion prevention system. Amazing. Early life. Everyone's got an early life, but hey. Micnick? Oh, great was born in Van Nuys, California on August 6th, 1963. He grew up in Los Angeles and attended James Monroe High School in Los Angeles, California, during which time he became an amateur radio operator and chose the nickname Condor after watching the movie Three Days of the Condor. He was later enrolled at Los Angeles Pierce College in USC. For a time, he worked as a receptionist for Stephen S. Wise Temple. Don't know who that could be. This guy could be a Los Angeles Kings fan. <laughs> At the age of 12, Micknick got a bus driver to tell him where he could buy his own ticket punch for a school project and was then able to ride any bus in the greater Los Angeles area using unused transfer slips he found in a dumpster next to the bus company garage. Mitnick first gained unauthorized access to a computer network in 1975 at the age of 16, when a friend gave him the phone number for the ARC, the computer system that Digital Equipment Corporation used for developing its RSTS-E operating system software. He broke into DEC's computer network and copied the, compo the company's software, a crime for which he was charged and convicted in 1988. He was sentenced to 12 months in prison, followed by three years of supervised release. 
Near the end of his supervised release, Mitnick hacked into the Pacific Bell voicemail computers. After a warrant was issued for his arrest, Mitnick fled, fled, becoming a fugitive for two and a half years. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, Mitnick gained authorized access to dozens of computer networks while he was a fugitive. He used a clone cellular phones to hide the, his location and, among other things, copied variable proprietary software from some of the country's largest cellular telephone and computer companies. Mitnick also intercepted and stole computer passwords, altered computer networks, and broke into and read private emails. And like every... Oh, it's snowing. Amazing. Arrest, conviction, and incarceration. It happens to all. You can't outrun them for very long. After a well-publicized pursuit, the FBI arrested Mitnick on the, February, on the 15th of February of 1995 at his apartment in Rala, North Carolina. <clears throat> on federal offenses related to a two-and-a-half-year period of computer hacking, which included com computer and wire fraud, he was found with cloned cellular phones, more than a hundred cloned phone cellular codes, and multiple pieces of false identification. In December 1997, the Yahoo website was hacked, displaying a message calling for Mitnick's release. According to the message, all recent visitors of Yahoo's website had been found infected with a computer worm that would wreak havoc on Christmas Day unless Mitnick was released and, di and dismissed the claims as a hoax. Well, Yahoo would dismiss the claims as a hoax and said that the worm was non-existent. Hmm. Mitnick was charged with wire fraud, 14 counts, possession of unauthorized access to devices, 8 counts, interception of wire and electronic communications, unauthorized access to a federal computer, and causing damage to a computer. Mitnick, don't know how this would apply in a uh, court trial, but okay, Mitnick was diagnosed with Asperger syndrome, but it was not used as evidence at his trial. In 1999, Mitnick pleaded guilty to four counts of wire fraud, two counts of computer fraud, and one count of illegally intercepting a wire communication as part of a plea agreement before the United States District Court for the Central District of California in Los Angeles. He was sentenced to 46 months in prison, plus 22 months for violating the terms of his 1989 supervised release sentence for computer fraud. He admitted to violating the terms of supervised release by hacking into the Pacific Bell, voicemail, and other systems, and to associating with known computer hackers, in this case, co-defendant Louis DePayne. Mitnick served five years in prison and four and a half years pre-trial and eight months in solitary confinement, because according to Mitnick, law enforcement officials convinced a judge that he had the ability to start a nuclear war by whistling into a payphone. Hmm. I wonder if he could, uh, well, he can't do that because the Iowa class battleships require an all well they they're all uh manual. Basically you, you can't control it with a computer. <laughs> Implying that law enforcement told the judge that he could somehow dial into the no rad modem via a payphone from prison and communicate with the modem by whistling to launch a nuclear to launch nuclear missiles. Don't know how you could do that, but I guess people were crazy then into what they believed. 
a number of media outlets reported on the unavailability of Koshner meals at the prison where he was incarcerated. That sounds gross. I don't know why you'd feed anyone frozen meals. That shit could be contaminated. He was released on January 21st, 2000, during his supervised release, which ended on January 21st, 2003. He was initially forbidden to use any communications technology other than a landline telephone. Mm -hmm. Landline telephone. What was it, a rotary? <laughs> Under the plea deal, Mitnick was also prohibited from profiting from films or books based on his criminal activity for seven years. Under a special judicial Son of Sam Law Variation Act. In December 2001, an FCC judge ruled that Mitnick was sufficiently rehabilitated to possess a federally issued amateur radio license. Mitnick now runs a company, Mitnick Security Consulting, LLC, a company secured a computer security consultancy and is part owner of No B4, provider of an integrated platform for security awareness, training, and simulated phishing testing. Controversy. Everyone's got controversy. Mitnick's criminal activities, arrest and trial, along with the associated journalism, were all controversial. Though Mitnick has been convicted of copying software unlawfully, his supporters argue that his punishment was excessive and that many of the charges against him were fraudulent and not based on any actual losses. In his 2002 book, the art of deception. Mitnick states that he compromised computers solely by using computer passwords and codes that he gained by social engineering. He claims that he did not use software programs or hacking tools for cracking passwords or other exploiting or otherwise exploiting computer or phone security. John Markoff and Tsutomu Shimamuro, hopefully I pronounced that name right, who had both been part of the pursuit of Mitnick, wrote the, the book, the takedown of, about Mitnick's capture. The case against Mitnick tested the new laws that had been enacted for dealing with computer crime, and it raised public awareness of security involved involving networked computers. The controversy remains, however, and the Mitnick story is often cited today as an example of the influence that newspapers and other media outlets can have on law enforcement personnel. Since 2000, Kevin Mitnick has been a paid security consultant, public speaker, and author. He does security consulting for, performs penetration testing services, and teaches social engineering classes to companies and government agencies. His company, Mitnick Security Consulting, is based in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow. That sounds like a fun place. I've been to Las Vegas. Do 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 Viva Viva Las Vegas do 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 That's a very fun place. And apparently that's where he currently resides. Kevin, you've got a good team. It's called the Las Vegas Golden Knights and they won the Stanley Cup. Congrats, Kevin. Congrats. In 2000, Skeet Ulrich and Russell Wong portrayed Kevin Mitnick. Yes, they, they really did think about making a movie. <clears throat> in Tsutomu Shimamaro. God damn it, I just butchered another name. Respectively, in the movie called Takedown. Known as Takedown. Well, track down, but known as takedown outside the U.S. Why does it need a different name? Which was based on the book Takedown by Mark, by John Markoff and 
Tsutomu Shomomo. I can't do this shit. The DVD was released in September 2004. Mitnick also appeared in Warner Herzog's documentary Lo and Behold, Reverse Reveries of the Connected World in 2016. Mitnick has at least four books. The Art of Deception, which came out in 2002. The Art of Intrusion, which came out in 2005. Ghost in the Wires. Which came out in 2011. And the Art of Invisibility. The Art of the Ninja. Just kidding. It's just called The Art of Invisibility. Which came out in 2017. And another book called The Fugitive Game. Online with Kevin Mitnick. Which was authorized by Mitnick. And it was written by Jonathan Littman. That'll be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you loved today's video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. And Kevin, if you are watching this, we will see your Los Angeles Golden Knights next year here in St. Louis City, Missouri at the Enterprise Center where it will be the St. Louis Blues versus the Golden Knights. And as Tom Calhoun says, so drive, so, so drive home safely and let's go Blues!
Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, see you next video.